Hey guys, what's going on? Jack here, and this is Jack's Fish Tanks, and today we're talking about how I got into the fish keeping hobby. I've been in this hobby now for about three and a half years. I started with a six gallon fluval edge in my bedroom, and now have moved on to building a 500 gallon SPS dominated reef in my basement. So let's talk about a little bit how I started. I started one day by going around YouTube, and I saw this guy called Mr. Solar Tank TV. And I checked out his tank. At the time, he owned, uh, I think it was a 243-gallon 200, rimless tank. I want to say that's correct. It might have been his 375-gallon tank. I'm uncertain at which one it was. It was one of those two. And I thought back to the times when I used to have goldfish tanks when I was a kid. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to try it again. So I got, got home, asked my mom about it, and she said she'd have to think about it. But for the next one month, I think, while she was thinking about it, I was doing research at home. I researched it for probably a good, I don't know, 48 hours most likely. I think I probably spent two solid days researching that tank in a month. Probably even longer, actually. I'm going to push that and say maybe 72 hours of just watching videos, going on forums, all this stuff. And I was... 11 and a half years old trying to figure out all this stuff. It was really funny. Uh, but then I talked to her about it and she agreed to it as long as I could be responsible enough to own it and not let her take care of it. So I picked up a six gallon Fubal Edge the next day. It was just a standard tank, put some gravel in there and put six Zebra Danios inside that tank. And that tank was set up for probably around nine months. And in the time that tank was set up, I also got a 10 gallon, which was right across from it. So that 10 gallon, it was a planted tank, my first planted tank. I had a, um, an electric blue crayfish in there named Cray Cray, you know, pretty, pretty awesome name. Uh, after probably about four months owning him, he grew from being about this big to probably being, up, being about this big. And you know, a 10 gallon tank, it's not really big enough for him. And I didn't have enough money to buy a bigger tank, and that was definitely, definitely a mistake, because one day I woke up, right before I was going to Hawaii, and he wasn't in the tank. And sadly, about six months later, I found him underneath the stand of another fish tank. <laughs> but from that tank, went um, a 36-gallon freshwater tank. That tank there is what I got so I could get bala sharks, and I really wanted them, so I had to get a bigger tank. Kept them in there for a while. Eventually, I grew that thing. Then I bought a 72-gallon freshwater tank. And then I decided, finally, to try salt water. Very hesitant at first, so I just picked up a 20 gallon tank. It was, oh god, it was awful. Like, I had an Aquion hang on back filter, standard fluorescent lights, uh, I don't even know what type of heater. It was like a standard generic heater. And inside of it was, you know, normal sand, like the Aragonite sand that you use. And then it had like a dead coral skeleton and then a big piece of fake coral. I was like, this big of a pink. And Ugly as all hell, but put in my tank anyways, because I didn't know really, you know, what to look for. I had a little stick-on thermometer on the side, it was, it was fantastic. Um, inside that tank, I think I started with file fish and a banded coral trim. They lasted a decent amount of time until one day the banded coral shrimp, as I was watching, grabs the file fish out of the water and kills him and starts eating him. That pretty quickly got the coral shrimp kicked out of my tank. After that, I think I picked up a pajama cardinal and a fox face, which was a definite mistake, and they both died in a week, and I said, enough of salt water, I can't do it. Gave up on it pretty quickly. After that, that tank got turned into a freshwater Amazon tank, like angelfish and corridors, catfish and some discus. Really liked it, it was a pretty planted tank, worked nicely. And then one day I was kind of looking at that tank and I was just thinking, this is probably about two weeks later, okay? That tank really was not set up long. But two weeks after the solar tank got taken down, turned to a fresh one. And I was just looking at it and I was like, maybe I should just try salt water again. Drained the tank, sold my fish. Actually, I didn't sell my fish, but it was on my 72 gallon. Still got them over there, actually. The tank's still running. It's my only fresh water tank still running. But it's. Pretty quick then. I put some sand back in there. I bought 
25 pounds of live rock and built this nice structure in there. It was definitely, definitely a pile of rock salon. Nothing as nice as, you know, something like this. Inside that tank, I wet the tank cycle with Biospira. Bio Sorry about my cat getting trapped out here. But yes, yeah, cycle tank with Biospira and one black Ocellaris clown fish. Let the tank sit for a while and then because I like my file fish so much, I had to pick up another file fish, stuck them inside the tank. And then, technically, you would say that tank would be full. You know, it's usually a fish for 10 gallons in salt water if you're gonna go the old tiny ways, which all the fish people told me to do. And throughout the years of me owning fresh water and salt water, I've learned that's just certainly not true. I'll kind of go over what I mean by that in a little bit here. But, I eventually then decided to buy a yellow tank. I saw them in the store, I thought they looked really, really nice. Next day, bought a yellow tank, got it, gave him back to the store for them to cure him, because I want, I want to get coral in that tank and they want to put copper in it. <laughs> um, and he died and then they get my money back because that store kind of sucks and I don't go there anymore. But after that, I think I decided to buy a Niger trigger and a Picasso trigger. Put them in at the same time. They're both about a half inch long. They both did super, super well. They lived, I don't even know, a year, year and a half. Picasso Trigger, when he, I moved him to a 90 gallon, along with the Niger Trigger. And he swam to my protein skimmer and sadly got stuck in there when I was gone on vacation. The Niger Trigger is actually right behind you guys and he is nearing seven and a half inches long right now. He's definitely really big, but he has good personality. He's very, very friendly. Doesn't eat coral, doesn't eat fish, doesn't even touch my shrimp. So. Definitely one of my favorites. So that 20 gallon there definitely paved the way for my fish keeping experience. After that tank was kind of set up as just a fish only tank, I decided to get into coral. I started looking around and I was kind of like, ah, my lights aren't too great, so what should I pick up? Picked up some eagle eye zoas on a frag about that big. Put them in there, they grew one new head and I was instantly like, freaking reef junkie, expert level, I can do anything. So then as any idiot would do, he goes out and buys a hammer, I think a hammer, what do you call it? hammer coral colony, about this big for like $175. Like, freaking idiot here. I'm like, oh yeah, it was super easy to keep. Put inside the tank, about two days later, it melts away in my tank. And I'm like, wow. So, that there was definitely a good learning experience and kind of showed me reef keeping is not your friend. You kind of have to master it to get it. So, after that happened, I then kind of realized maybe I should buy a bigger tank. Got told at the fish store after I had like six fish in my tank, my 20 gallon, that, you know, like, oh, I have less fish in my 55 gallon, and yada, 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 and he was like, what's your tank look like? He showed him a picture of it, and he, he said it was probably covered in cyan or whatever the heck that was. It was completely clear, no spots on the glass, coralline algae growing everywhere. It was a very, very nice tank. Let's not get that wrong, but it was just full of fish. Nitrates were zero, phosphates were zero. I knew how to check those back then. But, I don't know, that tank's doing really, really well, and that guy still was judging me. Um, but then he told me to buy a bigger tank, and I was kind of looking around. I was gonna buy a 55 gallon, and everyone's like, oh yeah, just go buy a 55 gallon, a dollar a gallon sale, and I hate a 55 gallon. Four feet long, like that wide, and like this tall, I'm like, no. I'm just gonna, if I'm gonna buy a tank, I may as well get the ones I want. So. I looked around and I bought a 90 gallon tank with an overflow built in and I was like, sold, I bought it, bought a stand, got it home, stuck it in my basement <laughs> and problems came up right away. Filled it up the first time and I, I, didn't, I didn't know what base rock was, or not base rock, um, uncured live rock was and I bought 200 pounds of it and I was like, alright, cool, put it in my tank, next day it'll be fine, you know, I'm thinking it's just like live rock, what I didn't know about this. Stick it in my tank, ammonia, boom. And I had no clue what's going on. Didn't have any fish in there at the time. It was just me putting rock inside my tank. And I couldn't figure it out. And I tried draining all the water and yada, 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 and nothing worked. A tank completely just clouded up, drained the tank, put all the rock away, killed all the rock, and then let the tank sit for a good two months. Just pissed. Then I think I went on to cleaning out my tank. My tank had this disgusting ammonia calcium, I don't know what it is, I've never even heard of it. I tried looking it up, couldn't find anything about it. Like a film just covering it that I had to scrape off with a razor blade every single inch of it. 
really, really hard, but eventually I got it off, set up the tank again, but this time I filled up my overflow with the expanding foam because I didn't want to use the overflow because I'm weird or something like that, and filling it up, and I heard boom, and the entire overflow is floating in my tank, pouring water onto my floor. Oh, it, was, it was a bad time. Um, so then I decided, well, may as well just cut out my, you know, cut out the overflow. My overflow's hanging out a little bit, get a razor blade, cut it off, drain the tank, take out all the sand, I put a sheet of glass in there, and I silicone it on, and that's, that's what you have behind you now. It's running on a Fluble FX6 canister filter, two hang on back reef octopus protein skimmers, and two radion pro lights. And hey, if it was SPS coral, not gonna complain about that. Um, but then after that, I kind of started looking around and being like, okay, I like SPS coral, maybe I should kind of get a tank design just for it. So I started looking at in July, no, uh, May of last year, so about a year from now. And I decided to get another 90 gallon, this time keeping the overflow, pumping it down to a 20 gallon sump, putting it through a protein skimmer, dosing my tank, all of this stuff. I had this awesome plan of this high-tech reef tank with like Vortec pumps in each corner, like two MP40s, Rig Radeon Pro lights above it, like a super nice canopy and like this acrylic stand, acrylic stand and the acrylic canopy are still coming. I just decided to revisit those in the last couple weeks. <laughs> um, my protein skimmer was gonna be like the Vertex Omega skimmer and I was gonna get this like awesome um, Zeovit reactor and I was like, oh, this is gonna be the best tank ever. And get automated dosing and Neptune, Neptune systems, APAX, and I was like, it's gonna be fantastic. And then I priced it all together and I realized that no way. So I did a budget tank with these lights, which I gotta admit, they're banging. <laughs> the price you pay, they're really, really nice. You standard base rock, protein skimmers, just a reef octopus skimmer, but it works fantastic. 20 gallon sump, nothing fancy custom made, but our turn pumps off me on, and I hand dose my tank still, and I still don't have it on the top off. I actually just use an RO line running to my tank with a little valve, and I just fill it up every single day. My parameters stay level, and my corals like it, so can't complain. I'm not saying it's a perfect setup, but you know, it works. <clears throat> this tank here, though, definitely was like night number one. It gave me a few problems. First time I set it up, I filled it up with some fish, and I think I had a powder blue tang, two yellow tangs, and two pound fish in this tank at the time. And then my birthday came around and I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna spend all my birthday money on fish. And I really just didn't think about this. I went up to the fish store and I bought a nine inch naso tank. Just me not thinking here. Put him inside the tank, gets it. Actually, didn't, doesn't get it. Has velvet. Nukes my tank and kills everything in there. I, 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 this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. That fish is one fourth the size of my tank. I don't know what I was thinking when I was buying that fish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't pisses me off just thinking about that. Quarantine your fish, that's another tip I have for you guys. <clears throat> All right, let's get back to this tank though. So after that, I set this tank again as an SPS tank. And it ran from the time I, I set up the day before I went to Macnell with two acros, and I think it went, so this is Macnell of last year, so 2015. I think it lasted until December, which for me, I was pretty happy about that. But then one day, dumped the container of fish food in there without knowing Came back the next day, everything was dead. Oh, like my nitrates were so high, they were like blood red. Oh god, it was awful. Tank was crazy, and I just let it sit for like two or three weeks. Grew hair allergy. I just didn't care. I was pissed. There's like one fish in there, and then one day, <laughs> my parents went out, and I just came downstairs and freaking just turned on the music and just cleaned out this tank, drained it all the way with. A uh, freaking pitcher running back and forth through the sink, like a little pitcher, like this big. I don't know why I didn't use a bucket and pump. I had them, I didn't though. Took out all this rock, killed the rock. I took out all the sand, and then I killed the sand, and then I sold all my equipment. Then I bought all new equipment. It's all the same equipment, can I point out? I don't know why I sold a lot of it, but I got a bunch of the same stuff over again, just because I wanted to. And the only thing I actually upgraded was my skimmer. I got a Instead of having a four, I got a six inch skimmer. You know, such a big difference. But that's pretty much what I changed. And then I put everything back in here, and my tank is now here. Probably set it up now. 
two months ago. Two months ago, before I went to Dubai in the Maldives, and I had it running for probably about a week with my clown fishing here. Cycled it in two days using Dr. Tim's. I recommend that product to anyone who wants to cycle a tank in a couple of days. The ammonia spike is roughly that much, so you know, mm. pretty bad for the fish, you know, really bad. You know, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zeros, zero, 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 one. Yeah, it's super dangerous. I don't know why for the one at the end, there's no one at the end. Um, maybe it's binary code, I don't know. But that's kind of what I did. And then I let it sit for a week with those fish until the tank got stable. Then I put my green slimer and my orange digitata acropora and monopora that were inside that tank over there. Move them over here. They started growing pretty quickly. Let them sit over the 10 days and I was gone on vacation. It didn't die, didn't dose them. So I was pretty happy with that. So I picked up a red planet. Uh, red, red planet, uh, red planet. <sighs> Give me a minute here. Red planet, frog skin acro, green planet acro, and then we grab a little frag of my frog skin acro, which actually broke off when I was uh, mounting it on my tank. And for the last two months now, they've been growing, and finally I think I've mastered the SPS tank. They appear to be growing, happy corals, you know, starting off on small frags here that have grown a bunch of branches, and now they're starting to get a little bit more complex. Feeling, feeling pretty good about that. And <laughs> So let's, say a little, so let's give a little funny story about this tank. And this tank, this, this story's gonna connect here. It's probably about, I wanna say a year, two years ago, seventh grade. I, it was my birthday, my grandma decided she wanted to get me a, a nice fish. And we go, we go to the fish store, we walk in, and I was like, oh, uh, I walked up to the front counter, and I was like, do you guys ever get any purple tanks and stuff? And they're like, uh, no, uh, we, can, we can order one for you. And I was like, um, okay, I'll have to think about that. Me saying I have to think about that doesn't usually mean they'll place an order for you, but apparently they did. And I decided not to get a purple tang, and I got um, a snowflake, clownfish, and harlequin tusk. And those two fish there were super nice. They lived in that tank for the longest time, and I ended up saying my harlequin tusk, and my clownfish, I think, committed suicide by jumping out of my tank, which was a bad day. Um, but me not thinking that, you know, they bought me a purple tang, I kind of kept going. And, <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. So this is 2014, and in the September, so this is July, no, no, not September, October, in the, when I ordered this thing in July, I ordered in July, and I'm staying home from school because they're going on a field trip and I don't want to go to a camp thing for two days. So I was like, oh, I'm sick. So you know, I decided to stay home. My mom's out getting her nails done and I'm just sitting on the couch watching TV and the phone rings. And I was like, yeah, maybe as well check in case it's like my dad or something like that. And I look and it just says, Why is limited, which is my local fish court. And I pick up the phone and I'm like, hello, this is this Jack Strong? And I was like, yes. And then they're like, oh, your purple tang is in stock. And they're like, um, you should be over pretty quickly because we don't want to really, you know, take it out of the bag, distress it that much, and activate it to our tanks. And I was like, uh, like, he's been really confused. And I was like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah, we have one for you. You know, it has your name on it. You know, it has your name on the bag and everything. And I was like, okay, uh, I guess I'll be over in about, you know, 25 minutes. And I'm like, okay, see you then. And I just called my mom, like, mom, get home now. I have a fish and a quack so limited. And she's like, wait, wait, she's like, when did you order this? I'm like, I don't even know. And she's like, okay. We run over there, we grab this fish. It's a little, I don't know, three, uh, three inch purple tank. We paid $500 for it. I mean, that's, that's a lot for a purple tank at the time. But the price has definitely dropped down a decent amount now. But, you know, and then we're kind of just like, okay, now I have a $500 fish and it's in a 90 gallon fish only applied rock tank. And, Oh my god, uh, that purple tang has become my favorite fish. He is grown from being three inches now to nearing six inches. He's over there. Um, I'll just take a video um, for you guys sometime. Uh, named him PT, studying for plane ticket, because those tangs are super common in the Red Sea. You're really just paying for a plane ticket to get it around Syria, which is kind of funny. So, one day last, two weeks ago, I was walking into the best fish and walking into the best fish. Walking into best fish, which is the other fish store I go to. And I see their first tank, and there's just a little one and a half inch purple tank for $150. I think I had 125 at the time, and I just 
you know, I was walking in there with my mom, and I was just like, hi, I want a 50. <laughs> I just bought the purple thing, and then, because he's he was so cheap, he's good price, I sucker for them, my favorite fish. I had to own two, now I got two. And it's kind of funny, started the purple tanks. Ended up paying her back, don't worry, I'm not that big of an asshole. But yeah, no, I paid her back the next day, and now I got two purple tanks. And I thought that was a pretty good story to tell us, you guys, because I think it's pretty funny. 500 gallon tank though, I do plan on getting two more in there and having a school of four purple tanks, which I think is going to be really cool. Because I found some guy who was willing to sell me two of them for only $150, and I was like, good. So, that's probably what's going to happen with that tank. Don't really have much else to tell you guys. Um, actually, I guess I do, but I think I should probably end the video here. It's already been like 20 minutes long. So, thanks guys for watching. Jack's Fish Tanks. And I'm Jack Strong. See you guys next time.